begin today with our politics lead and growing fallout over President Trump's July 4th extravaganza, what the commander in chief called today the show of a lifetime. A source telling CNN that some military leaders are expressing concerns about the politicization of the event, which will feature American military hardware, including tanks, bombers, and elite vehicles for all the world to see. The Pentagon says that some members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and other top military officials will not be in attendance, citing prior commitments. But the president will be flanked tomorrow night by Acting Defense Secretary Mark Esper and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Marine General James Dunford, before delivering what will be unprecedented in the modern era for an Independence Day celebration, a presidential address on the National Mall, prompting concerns inside the Pentagon. What should top military officials do if President Trump, during his speech, starts serving up a 4th of July sized helping of partisan red meat. The Trump administration refuses to say, in addition, how much the event will cost. But the president did tweet today, quote, the cost of our great salute to America tomorrow will be very little compared to what it's worth. We own the planes. We have the pilots. The airport is right next door, Andrews. All we need is the fuel. As CNN's Pamela Brown reports, however, that claim is a bit misleading, to say the least. Those armored vehicles have started arriving at the National Mall. Moved in overnight through Washington, D.C., carefully so as not to damage local roads and bridges for the president's so-called salute to America, hyping it up as the show of a lifetime. Some incredible equipment, military equipment on display. Acting Defense Secretary Mark Esper and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Joseph Dunford are among the military officials who will attend. But CNN has learned that some military chiefs have expressed reservations about politicizing the July 4th celebration, concerned about the tanks and armored vehicles on display. And while the overall cost of the event has not been released, today the president defended the plans, tweeting, the cost of our great salute to America tomorrow will be very little compared to what it is worth. We own the planes. We have the pilots. The airport is right next door. All we need is the fuel. We own the tanks and all. But that tweet is misleading, as many of the aircraft involved in the ceremony will be flying in from around the country. F-35 fighter jets from California. A B-2 stealth bomber from Missouri. Apache helicopters from Kentucky. And the Blue Angels from Florida all burning costly fuel to get to Washington. We're going to have planes going overhead, the best fighter jets in the world, and other planes too. And the president's checklist ignores additional costs and security, personnel and infrastructure. For example, the see-through bulletproof barrier needed for the president's speech at the Lincoln Memorial, $24,000. And that's not all. The Washington Post reporting the National Park Service will divert nearly 2.5 million extra from fees paid by visitors and intended to improve parks across the country for the president's event, compared to the usual cost of about 2 million for the entire 4th of July celebration on the mall. And the president caused some confusion today when he claimed his administration has not dropped the fight to include a citizenship question on the U.S. Census. He said the news reports about it were fake. But, Jake, just yesterday, Trump's own Justice Department and Commerce Secretary said the administration had abandoned plans to include the controversial question and was moving forward with printing the questionnaire without it. An official says, though, that there are ongoing discussions in the White House about a path forward to include the question. What that path forward may be, very unclear, Jake. All right, Pamela Brown, thanks so much. Well, let's chat about all of this. Alice Stewart, let me start with you. Are you concerned about any of this? The, the, you've, you've been in the city for a while. The, the 4th of July celebration is usually not only nonpartisan, it's usually completely apolitical. Right, and it is a great event. I've been to it before. I don't really uh, love the traffic. Look, I do have a problem with the president making it seem like this is the 4th of Trump celebration. It is not, it's the 4th of July celebration. But at the same time, I think it's great if he wants to liven it up, if he wants to make it a salute to our current military who are serving and fighting for our freedoms that this day is about, I think that's great. If he wants to give a speech that says, God bless America on our Independence Day, more power to him. There is so much criticism, though, that he's going to be making a political speech as opposed to a patriotic speech. 
Let's wait and see what he does. It wasn't long ago where he gave a speech in Normandy that was very presidential, very stoic. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. That will be what tomorrow will be like. If not, we'll come back on Friday and we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's not, you're not giving them the benefit of the doubt is the liberal group Vote Vets. They are distributing 6,000 of these USS John McCain shirts um, in, a, in an effort to, I think, trigger President Trump, upset him. Uh, given the fact hard. that uh, the, the president is not a particular fan of uh, the, the late senator. Yeah. No, I mean, look, here, here's the problem that I have with it. If we had any evidence to suggest that we could trust President Trump, then I, then I would be willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. But just the way that he's talked about this, the way, I mean, the lies in terms of how much, or the misinformation, shall I say, about how much it's going to cost, particularly if you think about the fights that we've been having about needing more money to take care of the crisis at the border, you know, he can, you can find the money if it's a priority. And I also think I, the administration is not thinking about, just think about the juxtaposition of those images, of those children in cages, and here is Donald Trump, and there are these, you know, uh, Fly, you know, things flying overhead and the tanks. I just, is that really the message we want to send about America? I think there's a much better way to honor our troops. And, and Sungman, there's a piece that just went up in the Washington Post by Greg Jaffe, your colleague, um, noting that there's a real debate going on right now. Uh, what if these generals are standing there with the president and all of a sudden he starts serving up red meat? He starts attacking his enemies, political enemies. He starts bad-mouthing the press. What do you do if you're a general and you're sitting up there and you're seen as endorsing this? And that is going to put the, the members of the military in a very difficult position because even at official events, a lot of times the president has this campaign rally feel at these Again, these official events. You know, I was just in uh, Japan and South Korea, where the last uh, the last event that the president had before we uh, left again for Washington was an event speaking to the soldiers at Osan Air Base in Seoul. But when we got there, it did have this very campaign rally feeling, and I think that's going to be a very difficult position for members of the military. We saw how difficult it was for the, for the military and also for then acting uh, Secretary Patrick Shanahan when the issue with the USS McCain came up. So that's, again, something that we're going to have to watch. And it'll be such a fascinating contrast tomorrow with all of the Democrats out on the trail at doing the usual Fourth of July thing, which we have all done, uh, you know, running behind the candidate along a parade route where it's all about, you know, interacting at a one-on-one -on -one level with Americans. Um, and I think that it's problematic for Trump in the sense that, you know, these are the, the optics, especially with, you know, we're going to have a protest floats flying overhead, the baby Trump float. Um, these are the kinds of optics that remind people of what they don't like about him, uh, that, that need for sort of self-glorification and to look like a big world power when everyone knows that we are a huge world power. So I think it'll, it'll be an interesting thing to contrast to watch. Well, I mean, but your, your point, Alice, that we don't know. He might actually be very restrained. He might actually be very modest. It might be a lovely celebration and not my country tis of me. True, and that would be, that would be, <laughs> Reason for celebration right there. If that's the way it is, I, I'm going to be optimistic. He has wanted to have a similar type of event and a salute to our military for quite some time. It just hasn't worked out in terms of the proper venue, the proper time. I think this is a wonderful time to do it. I think especially with the Democrats out there, they will be getting a lot of tension uh, on the campaign trail at these Fourth of July festivities, and I think that's great. But this is something the president has wanted to do. He is the president of the United States. He can do this. And, and instead of everyone getting so angry about he's, he's hijacking this event, let's all take this as an opportunity to celebrate our patriots. Let me just make one prediction that there will be days and days of conversation about how many people attended the oh, event, right? You know, terrible. given what we went through <laughs> around the inauguration, <laughs> we will be fighting for days about what this, you know, what the Park Service says was really there, how many he says were really there. It's always about size with him, right? That it's got to be this big event, this bold event, when actually, if you wanted to seem presidential, he could just quiet, that's what President Clinton used to do, just go quietly visit the troops and shake some hands and thank people. Well, that's All such right. an interesting mm -hmm. point because May mentioned the point of optics. I mean, a lot of people People obviously come into town in D.C. for the 4th of July, but this is still a very Democratic area. There are a lot of people in, this, yeah. in the suburbs of Virginia and Maryland and in D.C. proper who do not support him, who did not vote for him. So does it, even the optics alone, uh, have a backlash on the president? We'll see. Some people come from all over, though, sure. for the 4th of July.